Well, as we've been telling you, it's been mighty hot nationwide today and this week with some outer areas of Adelaide reaching 48.1 degrees Celsius and Melbourne CBD hitting 43 degrees today. It comes after supposedly record-breaking temperatures earlier this week, with the Bureau yesterday declaring that Australia had experienced its two hottest days ever. Temperature, temperatures reached an average record across the country of 40.9 degrees Celsius on Tuesday, before Wednesday knocked it out of the park by jumping an entire degree to 41.9 degrees Celsius. But climate scientist and author Jennifer Marahasi has challenged the way the Bureau has calculated this data to reach the record-breaking numbers. She joins me now from Brisbane. Jen, thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Thank you for having me on your program. You've been doing this subject and across this subject of what has been uh, inaccurate historic weather recordings for a long, long time, haven't you? Uh, back since about 2011, I became particularly interested in the issue, yeah. Uh, what has been done so, to recorded temperatures in recent years that you think is not on? So there's several problems. There's problems with how the equipment that's currently used is calibrated. So not a lot of people realise that now they're using electronic probes rather than mercury thermometers. And the electronic probes are not necessarily calibrated to record as the mercury thermometers did. So, for example, in Mildura, the uh, probe is probably uh, recording about 0 0.4 degrees hotter for the same weather than what a mercury thermometer uh, would be. Then there's the issue of the Bureau cooling the past. So this is the issue of homogenisation. Yeah. So they say they need to make corrections when there's a move. For example, in the early days, a lot of temperatures were recorded at post offices, and then they moved the weather station to airports and they say well when we move them we have to make adjustments but they always call the past now sometimes that's appropriate but often it's not and they even call the past for places like Rutherglen where there is no documented move um, so if we take an example, Darwin, for example, um, you had a temperature of 34.2 recorded there on the 1st of January 1910. They changed that in the first iteration, what they call um, their Acorn Sat official system, to 33.8. So they dropped it down by 0.4 of a degrees. Now, if you call the past, the present appears warmer. Okay. And then, after saying they had to make that adjustment to, to get it all right, they did a second iteration, and even for no reason at all, they dropped it down by another degree. So while the temperatures in Darwin were, were correctly recorded using a mercury thermometer in a Stevenson screen, they've gone and changed them. Okay. They've take changed us... what the temperature was back then. What about taking us back to 1896? And if people have done their research on what happened yeah. during that summer period of 1896, we had more than 400 Australians die during a very lengthy heat wave. What's to say that the temperature in 1896 was hotter than what it was in Adelaide today? Well, it, it, it likely was because there were a lot of recordings undertaken in places with mercury thermometers that would be pretty much equivalent to a Stevenson screen. And if you look back then, it was, it was hotter. The recordings were hotter. But the Bureau will say, well, it was with a mercury thermometer but not in a Stevenson screen. So we don't actually know. It's not official recording equipment, so we're not going to consider it. Now, they can do that if they like and say, say, well, the 1896 recordings from Will Kenya and Burke aren't equivalent. But then there are recordings from, for example, 3rd of January 1909 from Burke. Now, on that day, a temperature of 51, 51.6 degrees was recorded. That was with a mercury thermometer. It was in a Stevenson screen. It was at the official recording place. And yet the Bureau has scratched that one. They've deleted that from the record. So if we we didn't delete that from the records, Jennifer. We would have a situation where we couldn't call the 48.1 degrees Celsius recording in Adelaide today the hottest temperature ever. 
Certainly not. If you, if you look at, for example, and for a long time, up until about 20 years ago, it was, it was in the CSIRO handbook. It was generally recognised that the hottest official recording for anywhere in Australia was Burke, 3rd of January 1909 and then they decided to, to scratch that record and I can tell you the story of why if we've got time but maybe very quickly if you can Jen yeah talk about yeah very quickly so they say that the problem is that was recorded on a Sunday and the observer at that point in time shouldn't have been going in on a Sunday <laughs> now I actually got yeah 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 I, I the, the original book that it was written in is at the Chester Hill um, Australian National Archive actually asked to see the original book that it was written in and I could see it was the same handwriting for the previous month and he hadn't been recording on the other Sundays but he came in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of that week and on Sunday same handwriting he came in he recorded 51.6 and he underlined it. He underlined he it. He was recording a record. Exactly. He wasn't going to miss that day. He came back on Monday and he recorded again. Yeah. Same handwriting. Yeah. It's in the book. Book, yeah, it's, the book in the Australian It's National awfully Archive. suspicious. It's Removed. awfully suspicious that we're cooling the past to try and make a point about climate change in the future. Jennifer, Jennifer Marahassi, thank you so much for explaining that to us tonight and all the very best for Christmas too. And um, thank you and uh, all the best for Christmas to you too and your viewers. Good on you, Jen. Thank you very much for that. There you go.